What is the hardest part of studying physics? Is it the poor employment prospects? Is it the mind-numbingly difficult math? Is it the treacherous approximations that ruin everybody's lives? I personally feel it's this. The names. Physicists are known for naming things badly. Heck, look at the name physicists. It's not impossible to say, it's not a tongue twister, but one could have picked a better name. Physicists. 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 The remainder of this video is me trying to save physicists right. Thanks for watching. Make sure you like, comment, share and subscribe. Moving on, let us look at the etymology of some of those names, especially subatomic particles. In fact, let us start with the atom. It comes from the Greek word atomus, which means indivisible or unable to cut. It came out of a really wacky idea, which was the first proposed model of atoms, what I call the cheese model. Take a block of cheese, cut it in half, cut it in half again. Repeat cutting it in half till you can cut it no more. What remains is the atom, the part of matter that can never be cut. Until, of course, we did. But that's a video for another time. Next up, the electron from the Greek electron, which means amber. This came from a guy who stroked dead cat fur with amber and found that you could pick stuff up with it. Of course, he didn't call it the electron, it was just electric. But then Thompson actually saw this particle with his very eyes and named it so. And for some reason, physicists, they decided that every time they needed to name a particle, they just pin an on to the end of the root word. As with the proton, from the Greek protos, meaning the first on, meaning particle, the first particle? Named thanks to Rutherford, who first identified it as the nucleus of a hydrogen atom, but later found the same guy hiding inside the nuclei of nitrogen atoms. And so he thought that protons might be the fundamental particle that made up matter, and therefore declared to, to be the first fundamental particle that was discovered. Until, of course, we dug a little deeper, found out that really wasn't the case, but we'll get to that bad boy later. The neutron! Makes sense, it's electrically neutral and it's a particle, neutron. The photon, again, makes sense, photos, Greek for light, and it's a particle. Or is it? Fort on. And then came the 1900s when physicists decided to stop giving self-describing names to particles and instead name them or broad categories of them after physicists like fermions after Enrico Fermi, bosons after Satyendranath Bose, and Majorana particles after Ettore Majorana. Uh, consistent nomenclature? What do we look like? Chemists? And then we get to the quark. <laughs> soon followed by the various flavors of the quark. Look, it's the ice cream man! Hey there, kids. I got some new flavors of ice cream just for you. Yay! What do you have, ice cream man? Up, down, strange, charm, top, and bottom. Why stop there? Not only do we have flavors of quarks, we also have colors of quarks. <sighs> but we're sticking to just particles for this video, so these words will have a video of their own someday. There is a cute story behind why the quark is called the quark, and it has almost nothing to do with the actual particle. The guy who came up with it, Murray Gilman, said that he had the sound in his head. Quark. 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 This YouTube channel is now an ASMR channel where the only word I use is quark. quark. He just didn't have the spelling, which I guess is kind of necessary if you want to publish your findings in a paper. It just so happened that while he was searching for a spelling, he was rereading Finnegan's Wake, where he read Three quarks for Master Mark. Sure, he hasn't got much of a bark, and sure, any he has, it's all beside the mark. Of course, the word quark here might have been a misspelling, problems caused by shitty typesetting in a pre-LaTeX universe. And it might have actually been quart, which makes more literal sense, but then it wouldn't rhyme with mark, bark, and mark, 
again. But anyway, the word quark comes from a Slavic German word referring to a dairy product, but colloquially, it also meant rubbish. So it doesn't really matter what quark means. Murray Gelman just really liked the sound of a quark. And he really liked James Joyce and Finnegan's Wake. It didn't have to be this way, for there was an alternative. Ace. But the physics community chose Quark over Ace because... Who knows? The first of the Quarks were named up and down, this being due to their isospins. Spins! Another video for another day. Think up and down like positive and negative charge. All arbitrary, but we need to call things something. And then we get to strange and charm. <clears throat> Strange is called so because they were components of cosmic radiation, the zappies that zapped the earth from who knows where, and were given the name Strange Particles as a temporary solution. But as we know, nothing is more permanent than a temporary solution. And when people found that these strange particles were actually a specific flavor of quarks, they just maximized laziness and called them strange quarks. Charm, on the other hand, makes less sense but is more hilarious. In the words of its discoverers, we call our construct charmed quark for we were fascinated and pleased by the symmetry brought to our subnuclear world. In other words, I found a rock. I think it's pretty. I'm going to call it pretty rock and everybody else does too. I don't even know what accent that was. And then finally, we have bottom and top, which were chosen for being the logical partners for up and down quark. Whatever the hell that means. But here's a problem physicists run into when you're in a predominantly English-speaking world. Say you're in some conference and you're meeting up with, I don't know, your buddies who you really want to take you seriously. I work on baryon asymmetry. I work on dark matter. I work on bottom quarks. Okay, it's not really that funny, but neither is Uranus. Okay, Uranus is pretty funny. But still, nobody wants to say they work on bottoms. Unless you're a medical doctor who actually works on bottoms, in which case, I'm so sorry. The thing is, physicists are really lazy in case the lack of naming conventions didn't give it away. When they actually work with these things, they don't bother calling them by their full name, especially when they're doing math. So instead of up, down, strange, charm, top, and bottom, they just say U, D, S, C, T, and B. And so, especially for physicists working on the heaviest of quarks, an alternative was proposed. Truth for top and beauty for bottom. Why treat them beauty specifically? I don't have the answers for everything, Tiffany. Now, let's be fair. Nobody says truth and beauty these days. Can you imagine the catastrophe if that was truly the case? People, especially those who know jack shit about physics and make memes on Instagram like they have PhDs, would start claiming that not only is beauty on the inside, it is a fundamental part of the universe. Physics says so. Now buy this pill that has 100 times more beauty quarks and therefore will make you more beautiful, you ugly piece of shit. In any case, people stuck to top and bottom till a bigger crisis arose. In the modern world, physicists ugh, manufacture subatomic particles in the metric photons and the places where they do so are simply called factories. For example, the antimatter factory, where they manufacture and store antimatter every single day. What's the problem? Research in fundamental physics requires a lot of bottom quarks, hence the B in the LHCb. Which means we now have a bottom factory. Which all this sounds like a Rick and Morty joke. Their first solution was to call them B factories, but they eventually had to find another name when people asked them, what's the B stand for? And so they're now called beauty factories. So what does this all mean? Physicists don't really care about names. They care about the math that goes behind them and the stuff, the stuff they're naming do. It's because of this apathy in naming that we've had some very inelegant naming conventions, especially with the advent of supersymmetric physics. Whatever the hell that means. Their naming convention is simply to slap on an S in front of your particles to describe their supersymmetric counterparts. Quarks, squawks, leptons, sleptons, neutrinos, 
Snoochinos. I'm actually in a top secret government space program called Secret NASA or SNASA. <laughs> but here's the thing. There are moments when I feel like this is not a bad thing. Sometimes I feel like it's a good thing that scientists are naming things in such a manner that there is no preconceived meaning behind their discoveries. Amber is not responsible for electricity, protons are neither the first particle nor are they fundamental, and on and on it goes. Beyond all this, when you have things that are named after scientists, you increase the likelihood of turning the nomenclature of scientific stuff into a model problem. Especially if the person you're naming your discovery after held views and opinions that are really not okay today or they did things that we really shouldn't be immortalizing by way of adding them to the scientific dictionary that stays more or less the same over millennia. But how else does one recognize the contributions of a scientist to their respective fields? I don't have a good answer to this question and even if I did, I don't think I can include an entire discussion in a somewhat short YouTube video. So in that sense, maybe quark is a good word. We haven't forgotten Murray Girl Man. And quarks don't mean anything. So is that a possible solution? Maybe. That said, remember how I said physicists are really lazy? Like several times in this video already? Yeah, well, in supersymmetry, they don't bother calling it supersymmetry. They just call it Susie. Susie. I was trying to make this argument about how it's probably a good thing that the names for particles are completely meaningless today, that they're their own thing, that they don't need no sane etymology to make sense. Sane etymology, what a joke. And then there is Susie, who's just like, seriously, just why won't they just put in some more effort, those goddamn physicists?